What is up guys, Rick is here with a new video and today we are actually going to talk about cores again. I know we did that in a recent video, but today we are going to look at the topic from another angle that might be quite interesting for a few of you. Um, first of all, right now you're looking at stage 2410 of Void Campaign and stage 2410 of Void Campaign is actually an interesting stage for two main reasons. The first reason, of course, is that it has super high drop and that is the core of origin shard selection chest 2 and it is 100 of those so it will drop you an entire core including all the base cores um, the mockman and the astral core are not included here as they were released after the stage was made and actually have a higher requirement um, that you have to clear to actually unlock them so not in here but you can choose in a broad selection of the base um, course which is quite nice um, that is not the main part of course that we want to talk about um, we talk, if you care for which core to take from those, look my other video on cores that I released a few days ago. Um, we are going to talk about core fragment drops because if you unlock or beat this stage, you will start dropping core fragments. And you can see that right here in, in the selectable loot um, where you can actually select um, every single core. The Ezreal and, uh, Ezreal and uh, Mockman core. Uh, have a higher requirement and you have to clear further stages to unlock them um, but the base cores like Starling Jar and everything are all included if you clear 2, 4, 10 and you can select them and they will start dropping you fragments. We can have a look if I already dropped one. No, I didn't get lucky. Would have been nice for the video but I didn't look uh, before so yeah, it, is, it, is, it is what it is. You drop mostly one core fragment and um, they are rather rare, will take quite a long time like three four months of dropping cores uh core fragments until you have an entire core uh, which is a long time it's just a very long time and this is actually the point of this video um to think about something that you want to have in three to four months is actually quite difficult in idle heroes because three to four months is an eternity it is an absolute eternity and um, the way I approached this issue is actually, I looked at it and I thought, well, you have to choose a core because you can't just not, cho not choose a core. Uh, you want to have a core and it should be a core that is rather useful to you and it has to be useful in like three to four months. And of course, you can't predict the meta in three to four months. It might be that just the hero you decided on rolls up absolutely out of the meta and gets replaced by somebody new. And in that case, you have a core that you don't really need and there is not, not really anything you can do about it. The uh, support won't exchange those uh, fragments for you and uh, you have no uh, chance of exchanging them either. So that is always a risk. But the way I looked at it was like, okay, which cores do you want to build now? And that is basically the takeaway from the last video. That is something you should know after watching my last video. Which core do you want to build now? Do you, for example, want to go for the um, Star Alchemist Holmes Young core? That is absolutely a legit core, pretty good core. And um, do you want to upgrade that? And you will slowly get to Noble here. And as soon as you hit Noble, um, you, this core will actually be maxed for as max as it can be, as max as you, as you can upgrade it with other cores. Um, you actually need, by the way, if you don't know this, uh, you could drop a primary core usually, and if you want to upgrade to an advanced core, then you need to sacrifice one um, Star Alchemist Tom's Young core to upgrade this base primary core of origin to an advanced core of origin. So basically this core includes two cores, and if you want to upgrade an advanced core of origin to a noble core of origin, you will have to sacrifice two cores. So this core includes four primary uh, core of origin of Star Alchemist Holmes Young. So only Star Alchemist Holmes Young is, of course, the only core that you can sacrifice for this. Um, otherwise, it would be actually quite interesting. Um, might be something that I should uh, suggest. But beyond that, of course, if you want to go for the Star Alchemist Tom's Young core and you want to max that core, um, your first thought might be, okay, um, then I will just adjust my core fragment drops from the campaign and I will drop core fragments for this core. And this is actually, in my opinion, quite a bad decision because every time there is a core selection chest and you get it, 
which of course requires some whaling, no doubt about that, uh, you will go for a star alchemist from Ziancor. And at one point, um, you will have three star alchemist from Ziancor and will just lack the last one to upgrade it to Noble. And then you will sit there and think, okay, I, I said that thing in my fragment drops. And you will look at your fragment drops and you will see, oh, I got like 30, 40 fragment drops and my core. Yeah, and I need another core to max it. And at this point, you will think about just um, putting all those fragments away, just getting the last missing core from a chest and then all your fragments are basically gone and your progress is worthless. So the point is, it is much better to actually choose a core that you not want immediately. And cores that are especially good for this are cores that you use to buff your main cores. What do I mean by that? So we can actually see that a core has core liberation. Core liberation is basically an upgrade level for the buff a core provides. So we can see a primary core has a core liberation of one. Uh, then we can see advanced core of two. And then we can see the noble core has a core liberation of three. But if we take a look, uh, there are actually some magnifying glasses here. And if we click on them, it says core liberation level eight core liberation level 8. Are there five more upgrade stages? Can I sacrifice more cores to upgrade it? Um, no. Actually, this is a max level core. This is as max level as it gets, and you can't sacrifice any more cores to upgrade it. Then the way you'll reach a higher core liberation is actually by having other noble cores on the team. We can have a look at that if we take a look at my PvP team, uh, which actually currently lacks a core. <laughs> Let's put this noble core back in. That's better. Should have fixed that earlier. Well, you can see we have a base core, we have an advanced core, and we have a noble core in here. And um, the way this actually works now, if we take a look, uh, the noble core has a core liberation of level three. That is normal, that is as normal as we saw. But this core, the primary core, should have a core liberation of level one, but it says plus one. So why is it plus one? Let's take a look. It says source of attribute buffs is our SFX. And the reason for that is SFX has a noble core. And what a noble core does and doesn't tell you, it buffs all other cores on the team. It buffs all other cores on the team. Um, doesn't have to be activated for that. The noble core will uh, apply a passive buff to all other cores on the team, no matter the level, by plus one. So, um, just by having this core on Noble, this core now provides the same effect as a Noble uh, would as level two plus one is actually level three. If that was a Noble core as well, uh, it would actually be level three plus one. So we would have a level four core liberation. Now you may have already grasped how it works. If I have five other Transcendence Heroes on my team and all of those five other Transcendence Heroes have a Noble core equipped and the core of my Mockman would be Noble as well, then it would actually be level 3 plus 5, so-called Liberation 8, as said on the card. So that is actually the way you acquire buffs. And that actually makes some cores very useful to buff other cores. Um, and the main cores that buff other cores and are very useful for that are actually the cores of Fairy Queen Vessa and Mystic Fairy Freya. And why is that? Uh, well, those two heroes are basically included in every meta PvP team. Might change a bit with Ezreal, we don't know that, but those two heroes are included in every meta PvP team. And if you have those in every meta PvP team, it would of course be nice if those two had a noble core and would provide a buff to your main hero. So those two, uh, even if you don't want to use their cores, have a pretty valid reason to have a core. So uh, beyond that, both of those cores are actually quite nice. If we take a look at them as well, wait a second. Um, what the Ferrokin Vesa core does is basically it heals your heroes one time um, when they fall below 50% HP. It's quite nice for Forest SL, um, but falls a little bit short in terms of healing to the um, Star Alchemist Home. The Star Alchemist Home score actually has a better heal. Um, as it can heal 60 times and gives you buffs and everything. So it's a little bit weaker than that, but as you can use Star Alchemist Tomes for Forest SL, of course, still a pretty nice core. Uh, the Mystic Fairy Freya core is quite nice in Star Expedition and um, some other gamers as well. It basically gives your heroes a buff that buffs their attack by 20% and speed by 20 for four rounds. So that's quite nice as well. So definitely also a pretty decent buff. 
and uh, gives them a bit of a shield. Uh, not too much, but it's nice to have a little bit of shield. So both are pretty decent cores and definitely no weak cores. But what really makes them great is that they are in so many teams. So what I decided to do was I said, okay, I won't ba uh, basically go for the Mystic Fairy Freya core in the near future. And I decided to go for it and choose it as my fragment drop. I first had Starving Jara in there, early mistakes, kind of regret it. Um, basically made exactly the thing that I <laughs> said at the beginning, choosing the core that um, I wanted to drop or wanted to have, and I thought that it would be faster. But then again, it was when I decided on that. <laughs> Jesus basically dropped a core a day at the beginning, so it was a little bit different uh, time. But then I decided to go for Mystic Fairy Freya, and I'm now slowly collecting my core. I didn't get a single Mystic Fairy Freya core from, from a chest yet, decided to go for other cores first. And by the time um, I get this core, uh, my first core here, I can start maxing a Mystic Fairy Freya core or max another core and um, let the campaign drops come in. The important part is choose a core that really gets you something. Don't just say, okay, the ATD core would be somewhat interesting, even though you never intend to play him. Uh, choose a core that will be played in your team with all likelihood and choose a core that you don't want to get from chests in the near future. That is the takeaway, guys. And with that, I basically want to end the video. Um, I'm aware that a lot of you people have issues getting cores as they are quite far in events, require sometimes even paying or a lot of focus on um, events to even get them. 300 points basically was the price for, um, for a core in the Advent of Endgame event. And receive 300 points is outside of the free to play margin. Even if you did everything, you would only have 180 points free to play. Uh, so not possible to reach free to play uh, a core free to play in this event um, and it's similar in other events too but and 2410 is also quite far off for uh, most free to play players quite difficult some of you may have even cleared it but uh, i can understand that and i hope you can clear it soon and get yourself a core and fragment drops and i want you to guys to be prepared for that uh, when it actually happens so um in any way i wish you guys a great week and we will see us in the next one.